So we've given away a lot of effect stacks, but one thing we haven't done is really explain the workflow and the thought process behind it. So my goal with this video is to hopefully take a meta perspective on how I do a lot of my effect stack creations and use generative workflows within Resolume to really utilize a lot of the effects, sources, there's feedback, there's just so many different things that you can use and it can kind of be mind boggling whenever you first get into it. And I think this is a good representation of, of how, <laughs> how the uh, thought process is when you get into it. It's, it's kind of hard to understand what's going on and it's almost like you're just randomly throwing effects in without any rhyme or reason. And that's what I did for years and you know, I started to recognize patterns and that's whenever it starts to look a little bit more like this. And, you know, I want to start here and just talk about the process and the workflow and a little bit about effect stacks. So for me, effect stacks have been the most valuable thing that I've held close throughout my career. Starting the VJ Academy, um, I really wanted to switch my perception on what I can actually give away and teach and provide value with rather than safeguarding my knowledge. Um, so that led me to wanting to give away um, effect stacks. So Rob and I love to give away effect stacks in the VJ Academy and I found a lot of joy in building them as well. And um, you know, they are really valuable because it's, it's a grind to find them, you know, especially when you don't have a workflow or a thought process. It's not as enjoyable when you're randomly just throwing effects in there without knowing what a slight idea of what the combos are going to do or what parameters to change to get different looks. So there's multiple different ways that you can use effect stacks. And, you know, let's let's go ahead and talk about that. So the uses for effect stacks, I think, is important to keep in mind as you are building out your stacks um, because you do get random looks often and you know if you have in mind the potential and the opportunity of what you're going to be using them for you're going to be able to pick more out um, that are going to you're going to be able to optimize in your workflow so the first one is masks so using sources um, and like shaper sources different things like that it's easy to get white and black um, generative visuals and that's what you're going to want for masks and you'll see in a lot of the examples that I do in the academy I use a lot of masking techniques to make my shaders pop and different things like that um, it gives you some negative space to work with and you know it can it give you masking can also provide you good opportunities to blend multiple clips together so another one is overlay effects and that means having the effect overlaid on top of your clips. So this can be really cool, especially with audio reactivity and whatnot added in. It can add a lot of flair to your visuals. Now the next is going to be background visuals. So maybe you have a clip with some alpha channel and you can put some effect stacks behind that and add some nice flair to it. Now the next one, and which I love to create, is just generative main visual effect stacks. You know, for me, these are almost always audio reactive. Maybe you have a lot more going on with audio reactivity. It takes up a lot more of the screen, maybe faster pace, things like that. So another reason that I really like effect stacks is it can provide you a lot of variety with your looks. Um, you know, so your clips that you use all the time, if you have different effect stacks, it can really spice up the way that they um, can be performed live. Now, not to mention just being able to click one button on your MIDI and you can have multiple effects that are triggered at one time. So, you know, maybe a clip is not audio reactive and then with one button of a MIDI, all of a sudden you have 10 effects that are triggered and they're audio reactive and it's going to spice up your content a lot more. So let's go ahead and touch on the workflow. Now, there's multiple ways to come about finding really cool visuals. And one of them is just by starting fresh. And, you know, that means just simply grabbing effects and throwing them in and testing new 
ideas out that you may have, or maybe at this point you're still randomly testing stuff. And I do that all the time. That's fine to do. It's it's a fun workflow and you can be pleasantly surprised by mistakes or just changing the hierarchy of things. Changing the hierarchy is a great way to go and to alter different ones that you maybe already have. And, you know, I like to, if I have an effect stack that I really like, I like to take that one and then copy it and then start changing the hierarchy. That way I don't lose the look that I already have. That's important if you want to save a lot of uh, the effect stacks that you have and also continue to try and see if there's anything else that you can get if you keep squeezing it out or maybe bypass things or add new effects. Now, as we said, you can bypass things. Um, I like to bypass things rather than click up, click out of effects if I can help it, especially while I'm still uh, in the process of building the effect stack, I will bypass a lot more than I'll click it out. That way, if I do want to copy it out, maybe I have uh, one of my favorite effects that's bypassed or maybe the parameters that I'm of the effect that I'm bypassing has been customized how I like it, maybe as you know, external FFT on it, um, then I'm not losing that and having to redo it if I want to test it down the road. So as I mentioned, adding external FFT can be another great way to uh, test out different um, parameters on effects. And one thing that I really like to do is listen to music as I'm trying to find effects stacks and go through the parameters and just take your mouse and move it back and forth kind of with the beat of the music and see if you're getting any cool looks. If you are, you think you're getting something that's pretty neat there, that's a good signal to try and add external FFT onto it and chase that a little bit further. One of my favorite things to do in my new workflow is copying and pasting effects. So if you have an effect stack you really like, you can go right click it, do copy effects, go to a new generator or source or another effect stack, right click and then do paste effects. This will immediately take all those effects, transfer them over and you can get some really cool looks super fast. Now I've mentioned generators a couple times, so let's go ahead and touch on that and talk about what that is. So a generator is what you're gonna start with you may, maybe someone would say sources instead. I want to reserve the word sources for the tab in Resolum to go and grab actual sources out of there. When I say generator, I mean that it is generating the movement and generally the direction um, and speed of the uh, of the effect and the way it's moving. This is not, you know the law and this is not the way it always works and that's going to go with a lot of stuff that i talk about here it's not going to be exactly cut and dry you know these effects work in the generator this one works in the foundation and this one works in the aesthetics it's not like that so understand that whenever i i'm talking generally here about generators so Generators will, you know, like I said, they'll do the speed and um, the movement direction generally, and you can use sources to do those. You can use ISF shader toys. There's a ton of free content online. Um, we also drop a bunch in the academy. So do some searching, scoop some stuff up. Um, you know, there's multiple sources you can use. Go through the tab on Resolume. One of my recent favorites to use is the Shaper source and you can get a lot of really cool easy looks with that and i have some examples in the classroom so after we're done with the generator we would move on to the foundation the foundation is really going to be your style driver of the visual so some examples here are edge detection hexagon pixelation voronoi glitch ascii triangulate and feedback so those are some of the ones that I really like to use and I would recommend to test them out yourself. These really help drive the look that you're going to get. And then you can also do some final tweaks after that. But, you know, a lot of these would be a good example would be glitch effects, distort, um, you know, find different stylized effects. Now, keep in mind, I do have feedback here as a switch hitter because I think it works great in the foundation area and the aesthetics. Feedback is one of the ones I like to go readjust the hierarchy. That's one of the first ones I go change out and see how it affects the effect stack. 
Now with the aesthetics, some good examples on that are echo trace trails for easing. You know, maybe the effect stack is a little too jumpy. This can really add some good easing into it um, with trails or different feedbacks. Now, pixel sorting is a really cool one, especially if you want to add some audio reactivity into it. Now, if you are working with masks, if you want true blacks and true whites, this would be a good spot to throw in your bright contrast for those blacks and whites. Again, we touched on feedback. If you want to do color adjustments, maybe do color themed, maybe a corner color tint is a great effect that I like to use and really helps keep control of the color themes that you're using. So transform effect is another good one that I think people don't utilize. Some effects and plugins that you use will flip your content. And if that's the case, you can throw the transform effect on it. And for me, if I rotate the Y and the Z 180 degrees, this will flip it back perfectly. Now, the for this to work, the transform effect does need to be at the very bottom of the effect stack. So I think that pretty much covers the thought process, how I would set mine up. And I think that's going to bring us over here to Resolume. Let's go ahead and break down this effect stack that I did recently. It is a stack of 10 effects, and I did a music video recently of it that will show you the real-time audio activity, but for now, this is going off my voice. So what I've done here is underneath this effect stack, I have broken down each effect, and I want to go over what each one does. So I started off with the shaper over here. And if you look at my preview monitor, I'll break down each one of these and kind of show you guys what I did. So I created a rectangle and I just have the size repeating on a timeline. You can adjust the speed and change any parameters if you need to. And then I thought that the shaper was a little too skinny. I would like a little more depth on it. So that's why I added in dilate. And if you look over here with dilate, that's where I took the spread and I changed that. I added audio reactivity. I noticed that that would fatten it up for me. So I said, let's, let's try that on the audio side and see what that does. So just playing around with some different things here and taking the parameter and moving around like that, I saw it's something I like. So then you just, you know, change that on audio reactivity or a timeline. So it's all about getting in there and playing around with it. Now, once I realize that I like that look, the next step is let's see if we can mix it up even more. So what I did was grabbed a linear cloner and changed the parameters on that. And the idea here was to multiply what I was already liking. So that got me a little bit closer. And here is where I'm getting these straight lines in here. And it will make more sense in a second, but just see how it's, you know, it's kind of going more horizontal and more into a, a horizontal rectangle jumping around. That's what's giving us these straight lines there. Now, next is, so it also before we move on, I would say this is the generator. This is the foundation, those three, and then Next, I'm going to move on to the hexagon, which I would say would maybe start to move into the more of the aesthetic side of it. Again, none of this is cut and dry, but just to kind of give you some direction and idea with the framework that uh, I'm keeping in this video here for context. So after the hexagon, next we move on to the pixelation. Because I like how the hexagon is, but it's just a little too flat for me. I'm looking for, for a little more pop on it. So that, that pixelation adds a nice little blur on the sides. Now, the circular screen, is it's going to make it uh, those whites and blacks a little bit stronger and give them some punch, but it'll still keep the pixelation on it. Next is the echo trace. So if you'll remember, I mentioned doing easing and helping out if you know maybe everything's jumping a little too much or it's just you know it just adds some flair um, here is where I added in some echo trace 
And you can see the opacity is just barely jumping on that. So it's not all it's not always on until the music hits and then you get a little bit of echo on it. Next would be the edge detection. So I liked where we were going, but then this just changes it into lines, changes it into outlines. So here is where we really are getting those straight lines. I think it's a little bit more clear with the edge detection and the resize. So with this resize here, we're taking the edge of that resize and those are those straight lines that you're seeing going across. And then of course the hexagons, we saw that with the hexagon uh, pixelation. Now we did edge detection, let's move to echo trace. Now this is the second echo trace and that's a one thing that I do commonly is I'll, if I like how one effect looks, sometimes you can copy that effect and duplicate it and it will give you a whole other look by having duplicate two effects. Now you can, obviously you can even change those in the hierarchy where I have echo trace, edge detection, and then another echo trace. So it just adds some really softness and some easing that I prefer and it's not so jolty and jumpy. Now, again, going on the aesthetics portion here, here is the corner color tint. And with the corner color tint, I have the rotation angle moving with external FFT. So as this, as it's picking up my audio, that is rotating, but it's also staying in a general location. And it's going back as the music goes up and down. Now, again, as we touched on the transform effect, this particular stack with my Resolume 7.19 just so happens to flip the uh, visuals. So if I were to do this as an overlay or anything like that, I've seen it where it's flipped my content. So what I did was, again, make sure the transform effect is underneath everything. You can go down to the Y and the Z and knock those up to 180 and it should flip it back perfectly for you. So with this effect stack, I will drop this in the classroom for you guys to scoop up and feel free to give me any feedback on this. Let me know if you make your effect stacks differently or if I missed anything. This is a workflow that I've really found to enjoy. It's a great way to find your own style. You can get some amazing looks from it. And yeah, thanks guys. We'll talk soon.